let's take you on a step-by-step -step brew day using the NanoX Brew Therm. In today's brew day, we're utilizing the NanoBoss controller upgrade for precise brew day temperature control, plus the 65 watt pump upgrade for optimal performance and power. We've also utilized the accessory port on the brew firm with a sample valve for a fast and convenient sample point throughout the brewing and fermentation process. Another addition we've run with today is the use of a neoprene insulation jacket so we can gain efficient heating and temperature maintenance throughout the brewing and fermentation process. The brew firm will come standard with the dual whirlpool and racking valve, but it's important to ensure that the whirlpool arm is orientated on a 90 degree angle when installing for the brew day. This will ensure that it's at the appropriate angle for the whirlpooling process. Now let's fill the brew firm and start our brew day. Start your brew day by filling the brew firm with the appropriate amount of water according to your recipe. Once filled, put the malt pipe in place with the malt pipe inlet facing towards the front. The brew firm includes an inlet recirculation valve which is installed into the malt pipe. Once installed, it's time to hook up our hoses in the appropriate orientation for recirculation. Attach one hose to the dual whirlpool and racking valve and direct the other end to the inlet of the brew pump. The other length of hose will attach to the outlet of the pump and then into the inlet of the malt pipe. Once your hoses are attached, it's important to then fully open the whirlpool valve and the brew pump flow valve without turning on the pump. This will allow water to gravity feed into the pump to remove air and prime the pump before turning on. Now your pump is primed, it's time to start recirculation and heat your mash water temperature using the included brew firm temperature controller. The NanoBoss controller upgrade will also operate your pump with the touch of a button. Before turning on the pump, start by reducing the pump flow valve to around 25%. This will ensure you don't have a surge of fast flowing water when you start the pump. Once reduced, it's time to turn on the pump. Monitor the flow rate and adjust if required to get a nice gentle flow around the malt pipe. With the recirculation started and the flow rate set, set your temperature to the allocated strike temperature according to your recipe. Place your lid on the brew firm to improve the heating efficiency. While you're waiting to reach strike temp, use the time to prep your grains for mashing. Today we're brewing a hazy kvike pale, using a mix of malted barley, wheat and oats. Once the strike temperature is reached, we're ready to mash in. The element and pump can be turned off during the mash in process. Remove the lid from the brew firm and set aside. Slowly add your milled grain into the brew firm. It's best to do this in intervals, stirring well in between to remove all dough balls from the grain. Once all grain is added, it's time to set your mash temperature and timer according to your recipe. The pump can also be turned on at this point for mash recirculation, but ensure that the flow valve is again set to around 25% before turning on the pump. Once mash recirculation is started, monitor the flow for the first few minutes. Adjust the flow if required. Ideally you want a nice gentle flow with around 1-2cm to two centimeters above the surface of the grain bed. Once you're happy with the flow, place the lid on the brew firm. While the mash recirculation process runs, continue to monitor the flow rate and adjust if required. As mentioned earlier, we've opted for the NanoBoss controller upgrade to keep temperature overshoot and undershoot to an absolute minimum during the important mashing process. This is something hard to achieve without the use of a dedicated PID controller like the NanoBoss. 
Once the mashing period is complete, we're running the brew firm through a mash out temperature step and heating the mash further to around 76 degrees for 10 minutes. Although not an essential step, most recipes will call for this mash out process. The recirculation will continue to run throughout the mash out process. When the mash out process is complete, turn off the element and stop the pump for recirculation. Both the flow valve and the Whirlpool inlet valve can be closed at this point so we can set up for the draining and sparging process. First remove the hose from the Whirlpool inlet valve and attach to the bottom drain valve. Next remove the hose from the mash recirculation inlet and attach to the Whirlpool inlet valve. This hose arrangement will be used later in the brew day for chilling and whirlpooling. With the hose rearranged, it's time to raise the malt pipe and allow to drain. The malt pipe has integrated hooks for resting on the edge of the brew firm. Once raised, allow to fully drain. It's at this point you can sparge the grains with some additional hot water to help remove as much sugar from the grains as possible. When the draining and sparging process is complete, remove the malt pipe from the brew firm and set the controller to boiling. While the brew firm is heating to boiling, dispose of your grains and rinse the malt pipe to wash away any remaining grain. The insulation jacket added to the brew firm will significantly improve the heating efficiency of the brew firm, in turn making for a faster brew day. Once at boiling, it's time to set our boil timer and add our boiling hop addition. For this recipe, we're adding a small addition of Super Pride for 60 minutes. While the brew firm is boiling, you can use that time to set up your lines ready for whirlpooling and chilling. Today we're using a counterflow chiller, so we need to set up the counterflow chiller in line with the whirlpool so we can properly sanitize ready for chilling. When setting up your inline chiller, the first hose is going to be connected to the brew firm drain valve and into the inlet of the pump. The second hose is going to be connected from the outlet of the pump and into the inlet of the counterflow chiller. A third hose will be connected from the outlet of the counterflow chiller and into the Whirlpool inlet valve. Please note that when adding an inline chiller to the brew firm, additional hoses will be required for the setup process and can be purchased separately. Once hoses are in the appropriate orientation, fully open the Whirlpool valve, drain valve and pump flow valve. This will allow wort to gravity feed through the pump for priming ready for inline sanitation of hoses and the counterflow chiller. With 10 to 15 minutes remaining in the boil, turn on your brew pump. This will allow wort to pump through all your lines and chiller for inline sanitation. Continue to run the pump for 5 minutes and then turn off. Leave the brew firm to boil for the final minutes. Once a boil is complete, turn off your element and start back up the pump to begin the whirlpool process. For this brew day, using the counterflow chiller, we're first chilling the wort back down to 80 degrees in preparation for our whirlpool hop addition. By doing this, we will retain more delicate hop oils that will boost the overall hop flavour and aroma of the beer. In the whirlpool, we're using mosaic and galaxy hops to create a big tropical hop profile. While the Whirlpool is running, we can prepare for the 100% sanitary closed chilling process. First attach the lid to the brew firm and secure using the brew firm lid clamps. To keep our chilling 100% sanitary, we're using this sanitary closed chilling kit which includes a 0.2 micron air filter. The air filter kit attaches to the top of your brew firm lid. Once the chilling process begins, negative pressure is created which will draw air into the brew firm. This air filter kit will ensure no microbes or bacteria will make its way into the wort whilst chilling. Once the whirlpool time is complete, it's time to continue chilling down to your yeast pitching temperature. Once at yeast pitching temperature, stop the chilling process. With no additional transfers, fermenter sanitation or setup, the brew firm now becomes your 304SS conical fermenter ready for yeast pitching and fermentation. 
Leave the brew firm for five minutes to allow trube and hops to settle into the brew firm cone. Once settled, open the drain valve to remove trube and hops prior to yeast pitching. For this brew day, we're pitching with the Kvik yeast strain. The yeast will be pitched into the entry port on the brew firm lid. Sanitize opening and remove the air filter from the lid and carefully pitch your yeast. Once yeast is pitched, attach on the included blow-off elbow barb and set up your brew firm for fermentation. The fermentation setup simply involves attaching on the blow-off hose to your blow-off elbow and running the hose into a jar of sanitized water. The brew firm brew day is now complete and ready for the fermentation process to begin.